So full disclosure, I'm a bit of a Morgan freak. I'll admit it. I've always thought they were really cool cars, but never got totally excited about them. That is until the Aero 8 came out. Today, my kingdom for an Aero Super Sports with a manual transmission on my side of the Atlantic. But I digress. Today we have the opportunity to sample what really started the company. Friends, what you're looking at right now is state-of-the-art technology circa 1912. This is the very vehicle that started Morgan back in 1909. It was Charles's grandfather, HFS Morgan, that built a three-wheeler that looked just like this. And, and basically, he, he was getting around tax laws. It was a higher tax for four-wheeled, horseless carriages than there were motorcycles. But there was no provision for something with three wheels. So HFS said, ah, I got a better mousetrap. And so he strapped a Peugeot engine, which was a Hemi, by the way, to his three-wheeled contraption, and thus started Morgan. This British-made Morgan three-wheeler has an engine that's made in the good old U.S. of A. In fact, it's made in La Crosse, Wisconsin by Cheeseheads. Who knew? It's the s, s engine, the people that make replacement engines for Harley-Davidson's. It's a two-liter V-twin, 80 horsepower, 103 foot-pounds of torque at 3,250 RPMs. Has two valves per cylinder, operated by push rods and rocker arms, direct port fuel injection. You think we need to tell them it's air cool? You get the feeling like you are in the Royal Air Force. You're just about to hop in your own P-51 Mustang, fly over the channel, and take down the Luftwaffe. I guess that's why Charles didn't put a BMW engine in this one. It's really an international car. We've got an American engine in a British sports car, but now it has a Mazda Miata five-speed transmission. Now, wasn't the Mazda Miata a Japanese version of a British sports car? So it's art imitating life, imitating art imitating life. Yeah. Uh, for those of you in the Morgan world, you guys probably know Dennis Clavis. He runs Morgan West in Santa Monica, California that owns this car. And he has spec this thing out like beyond nine tenths of its life. You got the graphics, like blue mini graphics on the side, chrome headlight buckets, chrome exhaust, all the knockoffs are optional. And then he's added some things like the rack in the back. It's a really cool looking rig. The front suspension of this new Morgan three-wheeler looks very reminiscent of the earlier Morgan three-wheelers with the sliding pillar suspension, but it's not. This piece that looks like a sliding pillar is actually a steering knuckle, and it's attached to a very conventional double wishbone front suspension with coilover shocks. It's got rack and pinion steering. It's got disc brakes with vented rotors and powder-coated calipers with the Morgan logo on the side. But the neat thing is, that it comes with real knockoffs that you take off with a lead mallet. Very much like the uh, old Italian sports cars of the 50s and 60s. And if you don't believe me, ask Moto Man because he saw me taking this off earlier. So cornering is a bit of an interesting proposition for this thing. You don't so much steer into a turn as you dive into a turn. That's like the whole aviation theme about it. You, you lean in and you don't really need to lean in like you do on a motorcycle but it just makes you feel better. And then if you were to give this thing just a little gas, that's where the torque comes in, because really, it's kind of like Vaughn Gittin's RTR Mustang. It's a drift monster. Actually, speaking of Vaughn, hey Vaughn, want to come and take one of these things for a spin? I'd love to see you drifting. The back end is basically a motorcycle. It has a conventional motorcycle rear swing arm, belt driven, drum brakes fully adjustable. Now, I want to clear up a myth about Morgans. Myth has it that Morgans have wooden chassis. They don't. They have steel chassis with ash frames holding the aluminum body onto the steel chassis. We clear? For the past three years, you and I have driven some very cool cars. We've had 640 horsepower this, we've had Bluetooth enabled that, we've even had a couple of panoramic sunroofs thrown in for good measure. 
But in reality, well, all we needed to do was step back to 1909, strap a thumper twin to something that looks like the love child of a P-51 Mustang. That's a concoction of steel, aluminum, and wood. Mix it all together and you have the coolest car you will ever drive in your life. Enough said. <laughs>